once you've set beast running and once it's completed the job then the next thing you're supposed to do is run the program called tracer so this is a separate program that you have to download and it downloads as a zip file you unzip it and you get a directory called tracer now I would say that you can make this optional for your projects if you're doing something which was going to be published then you would have to do this step so this is just to check that the process of beast has completed successfully because we're under a bit of time constraints for the project uh, probably you can skip this step and it's not going to cause any major uh, changes because the tree is very likely to remain the same it's just some of the properties of the tree won't be calculated as well as they should be so let's run the tracer program so i click on tracer you've got the tracer executable so this again is a java program you can see it's got that little java in the side now the key thing with tracer is i want to open the log file from my beast job so I need to import the trace file. Now for some unknown reason this automatically defaults to go to documents which isn't where my uh, file is. So if I go to this PC and download that happens to be the directory that has my file in it. Now I have one which is currently halfway through uh, running. So you can use this to keep track of how well your simulation is going. So I'm going to open this one first to give a sort of demonstration because it shows red and yellow outputs. So let's press OK. So this is a model which is going to be using um, an evolutionary model which has four parameters. Uh, frequency, actually, no, it's just got one parameter, kappa. It's got four parameters which are your gammas. Anyway, the thing that you're looking for is this column that says ESS. Anything that's in red is bad. Now, it should go from being red to yellow once this gets over 100, and it should then go to black once it gets over about 200. So what this represents is some highly technical uh, things to do with sampling. So it's telling you that the posterior is not calculated very well. Well, to be quite honest, you don't care less about the posterior, so who cares? It also tells you the prior is not very well calculated. Again, you don't care. It tells you the tree height is not perfectly calculated, but it's kind of okay. Now, that's important. If the tree height was wrong, that would cause you some problems. The next thing it talks about is the clock rate. So this is how fast the... Uh, popular, how, how fast the virus is changing and it's directly related to the population size so these two things have a tendency to both uh, be read together clock rate and population size it's telling you how fast the virus is mutating so here it hasn't come to a perfect solution yet for either of the two it should be run for longer then there's something called the coalescent constant. Again, you don't really care that much about it, but it's converged on kappa and it's converged on all the other parameters. And kappa, if you look at the distributions of all these things, you see that most of the time they're roughly normally distributed. So this is the problem with clock rate. It's not found anywhere near enough samples to get a good uh, histogram. And the same with the prior. The shape of the histogram won't change, but you'll just get lots more. Uh, data in it and the posterior. These are very technical things. You don't need to worry about them to a large extent other than to see that they've all gone black. So this one hadn't. So let's open another uh, trace file. So this one is for my H5N8 trees. And here's the output from this one. Press OK. So these are all really well sampled. They're in the hundreds. So here I can trust my kappa 1 and kappa 2 they're perfectly sampled clock rate is fine and the population size so it tells me my population size is on average about 10.5 my tree height is 64.683 years 
So that's from the most recent common ancestor for everything that is in the tree. And the clock rate is 2.56 times 10 to the minus 3. So that means changes per generation is 0 0.0025. You multiply that by the population size, that tells you how many mutations you get in each generation. So the bigger your population size, the more chance you get of mutations. So traces just to look and examine is not absolutely critical unless you're going to publications.